There's something really familiar about this laser. This is the Monport Reno 45 watt Pro Vision CO2 laser. The title is a little bit of a mouthful and a little bit of an interesting naming choice since it's very similar to a very popular diode laser out there. But the 45 watt Reno is a desktop CO2 laser that features a 45 watt laser tube, a 16 by 12 inch work area, an included option between the honeycomb and knife edge bed, a Ruida controller, which is something that I have not actively used before, but I ended up really liking, and I'll demo that too. An 8 megapixel camera, a magnetic focus assist, and some other things that I will happily show you. There's some initial setup needed to get your Montport up and running, and it really comes down to setting up your, your water system and focusing your mirrors. The two primary things you have to do in order to get up and running. The water system is built into a lot of the consumer created lasers like the Adams Act Hurricane, the X-Tool PS2, and the Glowforge. But this one actually has an external system for doing that. And I have the bare bone setup for this, which includes an aquarium pump, which is included with the machine, a five gallon bucket and some distilled water. And that is enough to cycle the water through and make sure the laser stays cool during operation. Now, this isn't the first time I've used this system. My very first laser that I bought was a K40, which in a lot of ways, this is the spiritual successor to the K40. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And the system worked just fine. I was able to use it all throughout the summer and never really had an issue. Where I have had issues is with other lasers that have the built-in system. So having an external like this and being able to add more water might be more beneficial in the long run, especially if you live in a hotter climate like I do in Southern California. Now, if you want to up your game even more for a little bit more of a professional setup, there are water chillers you can buy that Monport sells that will actively chill the water as it goes through your system here. I might upgrade to that one day, but for right now, I'm just gonna use the aquarium pump and the bucket system. Once your water system is set up and actively circulating through your laser tube, you are ready to start focusing the mirrors. Now, there's a whole process for doing this, starting with the first laser by the laser tube. I'm not gonna go over that entire process here. I'll show you a couple of shots of going through and making some adjustments, but there are a lot of good resources online for how to do it. It can be a little bit time consuming and it can be a little bit tedious. Just please be patient. It is worth the time spent. I think there's a positive side effect of actually having to take the time to focus your mirrors. And that is you get to know your machine a lot better. This machine is not locked down like a lot of other modern lasers, which means that you're gonna be opening panels, you're gonna be looking at the different components and getting in there and making those adjustments. So if anything goes wrong, you're gonna have a better base knowledge of your machine and how some of these things work. And I think in the long run, that's a net positive. A lot of the consumer grade lasers being released right now are very much plug and play, but they have a fairly high rate of failure at times. And for the people that were promised this plug and play system, don't know what to do. They don't even know how to test and they're relying on tech support. And tech support can be challenging to deal with at times because of differences in time, high volume calls. We've all been there. Once your water system is set up and your mirrors are focused, you're ready to start cutting and engraving. And for the most part, that means testing. Once again, taking the time to figure out what the limits of your laser are, both on the high end and on the low end for cutting and engraving. Lightburn is my software of choice for using the lasers. There are some other free options, but Lightburn is the one that I'm only gonna talk about and recommend. It is a tried and true piece of software well worth the price and it is not a subscription. It is a one-time purchase. You might have to pay a little bit more in the future for future updates, but it's not mandatory. Monport provided the connection file that will recognize the laser and already set up a lot of the additional bells and whistles, including the connection with the Ruida controller, which I'll show in a couple of minutes. After doing my initial engraving and cutting test, I was reminded of how powerful a CO2 laser is. Even though a diode laser might have the same wattage, they do not really work in the same way. CO2 lasers don't really burn the material like a diode laser does. It really just vaporizes it, which means that when you engrave, you're actually engraving depth into a lot of your pieces. One of my first engraving tests was probably dialed up too high. 
and engraved a little bit too far into the wood, but it still looks pretty cool. And this image of George Carlin is often one that I use for my initial testing. And it's very much kind of like a boss relief type photo. I could probably even do like a rubbing over that to get uh, the image. So the laser is fast. It's actually really powerful and it's pretty easy to use. I want to show you a couple features that I really like about it that might seem like missing features on other machines, but I kind of like that they have a more manual feel. For most of my work so far, I've decided to leave the knife edge in. Not having any constant material behind eliminates some of the blowback or the fl what's called flashing and cuts down on some of the overall burning of the work. Do I have these turned the wrong way? Actually, I think I do. So I just realized I have these turned the wrong way and there's actually even a thinner edge that I should be using for my base, but you can have them turned either way. If you're gonna constantly be using smaller material, you probably wanna use a honeycomb tray so you don't have your pieces falling through as much. But for right now, I've kind of liked this for my testing. The inside is put together really well and it's got some really good parts in here. Everything feels really solid when it moves. And there's a lot of times when you hear a cheaper laser or a lower quality laser move around, you can kind of hear it in the motors that there's something not quite right. But I don't feel that at all with this machine. Everything's put together and bundled really well. And I've been really happy with it so far. So one of the things that I really like with this is the focusing system. Now, it does not have an automatic focus. And that might turn some people off because it seems like it's a convenience that a lot of people have gotten used to. I'm neither here nor there about it, which is a phrase I, I rarely use because I like knowing how to manually focus if and when I need to. And it's also because a lot of the autofocus systems can fail at times. I've seen sensors stop working. I've seen motors start failing. And the fact that they include this huge hex key as a way to move the bet up and down kind of makes me happy. I don't think it's that much more work. I kind of like the fact that you can do small micro adjustments simply by turning and gives you a lot more control over that process. In addition, I mentioned before that one of my first lasers was a K40, which if you don't know what that is, it was one of the first semi-generic lasers that a lot of people started buying about four or five years ago. Uh, they came out of Chinese factories, went by the, the name K40, even though there were some more name manufacturers behind it, they were all essentially the same machine. And I remember seeing some friends build some that were almost identical to this, and they worked really well. So the fact they've adapted it for this machine, I think is perfectly fine. In fact, I like it. That being said, Momport does have a, not really a fully automated focus system, but they have a visual indicator for focus, and I'll show you right here. They do include an acrylic block for figuring out focus, but they also have this little magnet guy right here. And you simply raise your piece until the magnet snaps into place, which should happen any second now. And now we're focused. I've gotten the habit of backing off just a tad bit. And now we're focused. So I kind of like the semi low tech version of focusing here, as opposed to the autofocus system that relies on LIDAR and other things that have been um, spotty sometimes in terms of accuracy. So I'm okay with this. In fact, I kind of like it. On the side, we have our connection ports for USB and for connecting the computer. We also have our emergency stop and our power switch. On the back of the machine, there's a built-in plug for the water circulation system, which I'm not currently using there. I have it plugged into an external power source because I want the water to be continuously circulating even when the laser is not on. I'm not sure if that's 100% necessary. It's just a personal preference of mine. There's also the power connection. This says earth wire, which I've never seen something phrased that way. I'm going to imagine that's some sort of grounding plug. I might have to look a little bit more into that one. We have our exhaust hose, which is also included in the system. And then we have our water hoses. One is for going into the machine and one is for going out. And there is my bucket system 
right there with the aquarium pump down inside. When you turn the laser on, it should go through a homing sequence and it's got a good sized fan back there to keep everything cool. What you don't see on a lot of consumer grade machines right now is an external display like this. This is a 2.4 color LED display. We also have a USB access port right there. And you can manage a lot of job parameters from right there on the console. One thing I do want to point out is that while the machine does accept a 20 inch long board, the height of the board is a little bit less because of these brackets here that control the vertical movement of the bed, which really only puts that height at about 11 inches and not 12. Um, I guess if you're not going to be using the full length of the bed all at once, then it kind of works, but and there's really only about 11 inches between those brackets. So you could have a 20 by roughly 10 and 3 quarter inch board all at once in there. But there is another little trick that this laser has. Let me show you here. I have a 12 by 20 workpiece here. And if I don't want to cut it down and I want to put it in the machine, I'm at a little bit of a loss. But there is one final trick that I wouldn't even have known that this was even an option if I didn't see it somewhere else first. We have a secret little access here. And I can slide that in. And grade my board. Now, I would not call this, I would not call this a full pass through because it won't pass all the way through the machine, but it is enough to have a longer board sticking out this way and incrementally engrave on it. The only downside is you have a little less protection here for the fumes and for the laser light, which is where you'll use the glasses that are, are included in the machine. But it's a nice kind of low-tech option if you ever need it and you can't cut down a board that you need for a project. So I like this as an option. It's low-tech. It's nice having this as kind of like a secret option and you can close it up really easily when you don't need it. I'll be honest with all of you. I wasn't really looking forward to doing this laser review initially. And it has nothing to do with Monport. Monport's been great. They make great products. But I've done a lot of laser reviews on this channel. I've done diode, I've done CO2, I've done Galvo, I've done open gantry, closed gantry, I've done a lot of different types of lasers. And I'm not sure if there's a lot of real new ground to cover. Not only just for me personally with, you know, and having room in my shop, but also for delivering something that might be of value to all of you. But I'm glad I said yes, because I forgot how much I miss just a simple, good functioning, laser. The simplicity is nice and I don't want to undersell that and make it seem like this machine is not modern. It is and it has a lot of things I would look for in a CO2. But it doesn't rely on the same type of automation and everything else that you see in a lot of the current machines and I think that is a good thing. That about wraps up this video. Just in closing, the Monport Reno is a fantastic machine and will handle just about anything that I need to do in the shop. Whether it's cutting or engraving, work with acrylic, wood, draft board, it'll handle all of it. The only thing it won't do, just like any other CO2 machine, is metal. And that accounts for a pretty small percentage of what I need to do for my clients and customers. There's some customizability available with the machine. You could add in a water chiller. I've seen people expand and add on to the air assist system and i like the simplicity of the function it has just enough functionality and bells and whistles to kind of keep me going but not so much that i'm worried about it breaking down and not being dependable in the shop if you'd like to pick one up for yourself go ahead and check out the links down below in the description and all the information will be linked right there if you like laser related content go ahead and check out the back catalog of my videos i have quite a bit there I also have a lot of DIY projects. If you dig a little bit further back in the catalog, you'll find some fun stuff there as well. I still have two more projects coming up, at least with the Monport Reno. One's gonna be a project video where I'm gonna be batching out a project for Halloween. 
and also a comparison between this machine and a different CO2 machine that I have in the shop. So until next time, take care. Don't forget to design, make, and play. Have fun making.